So here in the fish room, we have 22 aquariums holding over 3,500 gallons of water, as well as one or two fish. And it takes a lot of horsepower to filter that many fish tanks to keep the water clean and healthy for its inhabitants. So today I'm gonna to take you around the fish room and show you how I filter every one of my aquariums from the smallest 10 gallon fish tanks up to our big boy 600 and 650 gallon aquariums. Let's first take a quick scan of the fish room so you can get a feel for the types of aquariums we're working with here. I keep mostly large fish tanks, a lot of 125s, uh, several in the 200 to 300 gallon range, and a couple in the 600 gallon plus range, like this one right here and the one you saw a second ago. I also have a couple smaller tanks in what I would call the show section of the fish room, uh, a 40 custom and some, a couple 75 gallons. Uh, and in the working corner of the fish room, which I'll show you later, we have uh, some 10 gallons and 20 gallons and a couple 40 breeders. For, those are for quarantine and breeding purposes. But why don't we first start with, let's do the 75 gallon tanks. Uh, both of these 75 gallons are filtered the exact same way. Uh, and of course, most of the fish are hiding. You can't see any of them, probably because I just turned the lights on. But these tanks use a hang on back filter and they use my absolute favorite hang on back filter, the Tidal series. This is the Tidal 110. I am a Tidal filter guy. There are lots of hang on back filters on the market and most of them will get the job done. There's a few that aren't so great, I'm not gonna call them out. And then there's a few, I would say top tier ones. And I would put the Tidal filters at the top of those top tier. There's a couple others that are also good. These 75 gallons just rely on these titles and uh, they do a great job with bio filtration, biological filtration, as well as mechanical filtration. And it works by pumping water up into the basket where there's a bunch of media in here and the water rises through the media and spills out back into the aquarium. They're a very simple filter. They're not as complicated as say canister filters or sumps, but they're very effective. So in my 75 gallons, I use a Tidal 110. That is the um, model that they build and market it for aquariums up to 110 gallons. Now that's a great segue into our 125 gallon aquariums because we also use Seachem Tidal 110s on these. Now you might be thinking, hey Evan, how does a filter that is marketed for up to 110 gallons, how does it filter a 125 gallon aquarium? Well, I find it does a great job. All six of my 125 gallon aquariums run on Tidal 110s. And they've all been, um, all the fish are healthy, the water looks good, like the water looks clear, uh, and the fish are healthy. Now, with the 125s, I do supplement the hang on back with a sponge filter. So in all my tanks, I hide sponge filters behind some of the decor to supplement the 110, to give it an added boost of biological filtration. And you know, that has gotten me by pretty well for many years. If I, you know, had some extra spending money, would I get a second 110 to put on these tanks? Maybe because since I keep a lot of African cichlids, you tend to stock those kinds of tanks heavily. Um, and they also dig in the sand and the substrate, constantly kicking up particulates into the water column. So for purely for mechanical filtration, you can't go wrong by adding a second hang on back filter for the, this size tank. Um, I say purely for mechanical filtration because I've never had an issue with bad water quality from poor biological filtration. I think in the hobby, we, we tend to over filter our fish tanks. Um, keep in mind, all the surfaces in this tank, all this rock work, all this sand is housing beneficial bacteria. And I don't even have plants in here. If you keep fish that are compatible with plants, then th those are, I mean, those are filter boosters right there. 
And you know, I actually do have a good example of that principle in action here. Because while I don't keep uh, traditional aquarium plants, because the fish I keep do not allow for it, I do have this tank with mangrove trees in it. Now these are, they do the exact same thing as plants. Actually a bit better because they are much larger. Um, these uh, suck up a lot of nitrates and nitrites. So in this 125 gallon, I do have a hang on back filter there in the corner um, for biological, but mostly mechanical filtration. But I do not keep an extra sponge filter in here. And I this tank has always done very well. And I think it's because I have all these, these trees in here that just suck stuff up out of the water column and the um, substrate. But plants do definitely help with filtration. Um, but even without those in these kinds of fish tanks, I do um, just fine with one hang on back, a, a Seacom Title 110, and a sponge filter for added oomph. You would only need more if you wanted that absolutely pristine water where it looks like the fish are just floating in air. Because in these tanks, I, I like to think my tanks are pretty clean, but even so, you can see like particulate, like stuff floating in the water column. So you don't get that um, uh, flying through the air effect. Uh, I don't necessarily need that myself, but if you wanted that, you could go a little more on the filtration. Now, I think that's actually a great segue into our smaller aquariums because those use strictly sponge filters. Let's look at this 40 gallon tank. So any aquarium 40 gallons and below, and I include 40 breeders in that because those are technically like 44 gallons, I think. But anything that size and below, I use strictly sponge filters. And this sponge has huge, there we go, has huge surface area, a huge amount of surface area for beneficial bacteria to form. And these also provide decent uh, mechanical filtration. So it's, it's not as good as say a power filter, but look at this tank. There's particulate matter in the water column, but not as much as you would think given how heavily stocked this aquarium is. These things, these sponge filters actually do a decent job of polishing your water. And also regarding the size, for anything over uh, 29 gallons and up, I use these big, the large diameter sponges. Uh, sponges usually come in either small or large options. So I use the large for anything 29 gallons and above. For smaller tanks, say these 20 gallons, you know, this is my less pretty working corner of the fish room. These are, these tanks aren't pretty, they don't have lights on them, so I don't typically show this side. But for anything 20 gallons or smaller, I use the smaller diameter sponge filters. And then the bigger diameter sponge filters work well for your for up to your 40 gallons, like this one right here. But what about the big boys? The, uh, let's say anything over 200 gallons, like this 300 gallon acrylic tank. Well, for this, I am a fan of canister filters. So on this 300 gallon, we run a single Fluval FX6 canister filter. And I find that these filters work very well for everything up to 300 gallons. This tank has run for a while now off of that single filter and the fish are doing marvelously. The water looks good. Now the downside to canister filters are they are a chore to clean. It's a hassle to disconnect them from the aquarium, uh, empty, open them up and empty them and then clean all the media in there. Oh gosh, look at these fish. I love these fish. But yeah, canister filters are a heck of a chore to clean. But in terms of filtration, they are excellent options. They're not cheap, especially the Fluval. But if you're gonna go with the canister filter, I recommend Fluval. Uh, you know, Eheim has some good options too. Uh, I, I hear Ciche is coming out with some options. You know, that is a great brand, so I would probably trust theirs as well. If you don't wanna spend the bucks to get a Fluval FX6, you can save a little bit of money if your tank is a tad smaller. So this is a 225 gallon aquarium, and this has been running very well on a Fluval FX4. It's essentially a smaller version of the FX6, so you save some money. And I find that they work pretty well on these 225 gallon sizes.
But you know, you gotta keep in mind your own stocking levels. So I'm saying up to a 300 gallon, you need an FX6. But that's because I keep a decent number of large fish in these tanks. If you were to have this aquarium and just had a school of rainbow fish in it, or maybe, you know, it was, if this was Mo if this was a planted tank with like a big school of cardinal tetras or neon tetras or something, oh, A, that would be gorgeous, and B, you probably wouldn't need an FX6 canister filter uh, because the smaller the bio load, the less biological filtration you need. And if you're adding plants into the mix, you reduce your filtration needs even more. So, I mean, if, if you had a lightly stocked planted aquarium, you could probably take my recommendations in this video and cut them in half. These guidelines definitely vary depending on what you keep in your hobby. But all that said, let's move on to the big boys, the final two aquariums we have. We have this 650 gallon monster tank and we have this 600 gallon Malawian cichlid aquarium, both of which I filter the exact same way and both of which I messed up on in the exact same way. So these tanks are filtered with two Fluval FX6 canister filters. Let's see if we can get a, eh, yeah, there you go. You can see that. Now, these tanks have run for years on those two filters. The water has always been kept very clean uh, from a water quality and water chemistry standpoint. But one thing those t filters are not good at, or they're good at, but they can't keep up with in this big of an aquarium, is the mechanical filtration. So if you, if you can see that there, this water has, this is not, you know, crisp, crystal clear water. There's a decent amount of particulates floating in the water column. Now, when you have you know, two feet and three feet long fish, um, that's gonna be really hard to overcome. But I think it could still be better if I did this the right way. And the right way for this size tank is a sump. And the same thing over here on this aquarium. Both of these tanks I intended to have on sump filters. So a sump, that, that, that's maybe a whole other video. And when I built these aquariums, I intended to have enough space underneath them to put a 125 gallon sump. Uh, but during the construction process, I royally messed up. And when I was building the stand, I basically blocked out any space where I could fit a tank in there for um, a sump filter. And I've tried to think through how to fix that problem, to remedy that. And there are ways, but I would have to, you know, empty the tanks and, do some reconstruction, some movement of all the legs and the support structure so that I could fit a tank up under there. Um, and so far it just hasn't been worth it. So I just, uh, I strapped on two FX6 filters and they've been good. So yeah, that is how we filter 3,500 gallons of water in 22 aquariums. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, do drop them in the comment section below. I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, and until next time, take it easy.